All right, gonna talk about the border wall for those who know me and love me. You'll watch this even if you disagree with me. By the end of it, you, you probably won't disagree. <laughs> so we're in an interesting situation here. Uh, a little fast forward. Congress didn't has not acted on border security for many, many years. The feckless, sackless previous administrations did nothing about it. And we have a problem. We have literally hundreds of thousands of people coming across the border, bringing drugs, doing all this kinds of stuff. It's so interesting. People talk about this. It's so irritating. Oh, 70% of the drugs come through a port of entry. Are you a freaking moron? I mean, I'm an engineer, okay? I've been paid to make data tell me a story. Been paid to make other make data tell other people a story. Let me say that correctly. So... Let's just unpack that, just that little uh, of, of a disagreement or whatever you want to say uh, real quick. So if all of the drugs coming across the port of entry are caught, which they're not, most of them are, let's say, it just makes sense, uh, plus it supports my argument, then... You you have a piece of data. You have you have a data you have a piece of data that's potentially statistically valid because you know how much it is. The, the reason that you can't say that there is a certain percentage that comes across a port of entry over um, other avenues is because you have no idea how much is actually coming across a non an area that's not a port of entry. You have no idea. How, how would you know? You, you have no idea how much is being carried across. So you have no way of saying, oh, 70% of it comes across a port. It's just, it's, it's like, it's annoying to even have those kind of conversations because they're not factual. And uh, it's not, so anyway, uh, so here's the deal. With regards to where we're at politically, Trump uh, used... And emergency powers, which some people disagree with, some people agree with. I, I'm not even sure I have an opinion. I probably would lean towards disagreeing with it just because of the precedence that it sets. But I, I also would not go as far to say that it's actually outside of the scope of the meaning of the powers. Because uh, to me, that would be literally just decimating and desecrating the grave of the people who have been lost as a result of illegal aliens coming across the border and to the families who are even now, you know, living in, in grief as a result of losing someone. So I do agree that there's an emergency. I just don't know. I'm really frustrated because I don't think Trump should have had to have used this, these emergency powers, but he did. And, and that's where we're at right now. So what happens with that is, is that Congress has the ability to override that. So n now that the, the Democrats have control of the house, they initiated it. Uh, Senate, I think has a few more days. And of course the house passed it, basically passed a, a vote saying that Trump they're, they're overriding the emergency, uh, declaration. So the, the situation now is, is, is the Senate has, I believe it's 18 days to respond. So they have a few days left before they have to vote. Uh, and this puts them in a little bit of a quandary because the, the Republicans have control of the Senate, meaning they have more Senate Republicans than, uh, than Democrats, but they're not all unified. And so most likely the Senate is also going to pass this. And then the next step is, is it has to go to the white house, which is which is so silly in this particular situation, it creates this very interesting circumstance because it still falls under the president's veto power. So the president can, uh, in this case, it can't be a pocket veto because you're not close to the end of the term, but he can still veto it and, uh, and basically ignore what Congress decides, which is, which is very interesting, which is so he Congress basically the house kind of forced this situation because they knew he'd probably be to it. But so let's just, uh, look at the options here. So, uh, assuming that the Senate does pass it, which I think they will, 
Trump has 10 days to respond. Uh, it doesn't include Sundays, so he'll have a better part of a couple weeks to respond. It, here's what, it's so interesting to think about. Well, what if he didn't veto it? This is very interesting because it puts so much pressure on back on Congress, which is exactly where it should be. And let's say something happens catastrophic at the border in the next few months or years. Oh my gosh, those people would not sleep. The, the 116th Congress is so screwed if that happens. But I don't think Trump wants to wait for that, but there's still another strategy. So last week, <clears throat> the morons in, uh, in, the, in the House managed to put together a resolution in a matter of a few days. I believe it was three days. And they passed it uh, because they didn't like the free speech that one of the idiotic uh, congresswomen was using, uh, who should not even be in Congress, by the way. Uh, and, it, it, but what she said was not something they should have, you know, they could have, uh, censored her or something like that. But, you know, it, what she said was well within the lines of free speech and she should have been left alone and people should have just taken note of it and realized like, yeah, we voted somebody into Congress. We probably shouldn't have, we need to make different voting decisions next time. Uh, so anyway, three days to create this resolution and to pass it. So I think if, if, uh, if Trump was wise, he'd, he'd go public the day that the Senate passes this deal to, um, to override the emergency resolution and talk to the American people and tell them, Congress has got 10 days and I'm going to veto this. They have 10 days to put together reasonable and responsible border security you took three days to put something together because you, you didn't like what somebody said. This is border security that is literally risking the lives of our country, our countrymen, uh, the safety and security of our country. You need to get it done. And at the end of 10 days, he can veto it. But what would be more interesting really is to not veto it. Uh, if you put some criteria in place and said, hey, you've got 10 days to work out the details and then I'll give you 30 days or I'm just going to create another emergency declaration. I'm going to evaluate the situation at that time and initiate it all over again. Meanwhile, all the work and progress continues that that's going. So Trump's got a lot of options for what he can do right now. I said that I would convince you that the border security and the wall is needed, and I'm going to do that now. A lot of you have never traveled to South America, to Central America, into Mexico. You haven't seen how these people are living uh, and specifically the people that are involved in the drug trade and drug trafficking, they live in, uh, something similar to what I would consider to be almost like a Vietnam movie. It's horrible. It's terrible. The way these people are living, the way they're in the living in the jungles there, there isn't a uh, reasonable infrastructure because they're hiding. Uh, it's just, it's really horrific. Uh, the lifestyle, the weaponry, the, the security, the fear that is nonstop. It's, it's really crazy. Um, I've seen it. My family has seen it. And I would also say even a bigger point, if that one isn't big enough for you, that I feel like the wall and the border security is actually probably as beneficial for Mexico, for, for all of Central America and for South America as it is for the United States and for their people. And a lot of it has to do with them getting a hold of the cartels that are running these countries. Why is it that Trump has a decent relationship with the president of Mexico? Well, he might be a rational person. He might be a good leader. You don't know what influences he has, what cartel are, are dominating him, and how badly he wants to do right for his country. Uh, but he can't because of the control mechanisms that are over him. So being able to, uh, to have a wall and to, to, to kill some of that cartel activity that's happening uh, in those countries could be very helpful to those countries. It would be very helpful to those countries and to the leadership of those countries. It's so sad to see the literally trillions of dollars that have poured in and through some of these countries and, and, and specifically in Central America 
and to see the absolutely horrible infrastructure that they have. Why? Because of corruption. Uh, you think that the, the United States is out of balance in terms of the, the wealth and the spread of wealth? Then just go down to Central America. It is absolutely ridiculous. It is so crazy, so absolute corruption, just corrupt everywhere. And a lot of it is because of this. It's because of this issue. So the other reason is, if, as if that isn't enough, uh, you're so worried about you know all these people that are south of the border, let's actually show some real care for them. All of them. The other reason is, if you do not support border security and specifically having a secure border with a wall, then you are a supporter of modern day slavery. And I've talked about this before. I can forward a link to another video that I did back in 2015, where, or maybe it was 2016, where I talked specifically about this issue. We have re ignited the flames of slavery because of our absolute bullshit immigration plans and laws and the and, and specifically the things that that the Clintons did that that Bush went along with and that Obama propagated during those years is absolutely ridiculous the things that that we're doing with regards to uh, immigration now we have literally relit the flame of slavery in our country and what exactly do I mean you tell me what kind of opportunities a first generation migrant has in this country as a migrant. They have none. And you haven't seen the way that they work and the way that they're treated and the, the amount that they're paid. It is ridiculous. Now for them, it's amazing because anything in America, the worst one off in America is better than almost anybody else in the world. But for you to think that it's better for people to travel to this country illegally and be treated like slaves instead of using a, a border entry and an immigration system that actually works and benefits the people, then you are a supporter of slavery. Absolutely. Let me take it one step further with regards to DACA. I said this when Obama was in office and I absolutely still believe it now. You cannot mess with immigration without being incredibly thoughtful meaning that you cannot act, enact rules and laws with regards to immigration and expect to be able to undo them. You cannot. You cannot welcome people into the country and then send them away when you're done with them or when you think they don't deserve to be here. It is not right. You cannot do it. So this whole DACA thing is so political and so stupid and so frustrating and, and uh, it, it demonstrates the absolute ridiculous nature with which our Congress has now made a habit of operating. They could have fixed this so many years ago, but they didn't. So Obama wrote an executive order. Should he have done that? I, I'm not here to comment. I want to talk about what's happening now. What hap what's happening right now is more politics. DACA is being saved to be used as a uh, negotiating tool for the next thing. And, and that's just irritating. It's frustrating. It's irritating. These, all these, you know, literally millions of people are living in this, in this space of not being sure if they can call themselves Americans. Really? Oh my goodness. Here's what needs to happen. They need to be given 10 years. If they play by the rules for 10 years, they pay their taxes, they file their federal income taxes, they stay out of trouble, they have no criminal activity, so there are probably some bounds on that, then they can become citizens. They have an opportunity to become citizens. They want to act like Americans in America then they should be allowed to become Americans. These are people that have already come here. They've grown up here. They came here as children and they should be allowed to be Americans, but they should have a path that's very clear and frankly, fairly easy. Live out the next 10 years, be a good person, pay your taxes, follow the rules, and you get to be an American. 